How Praying Mantises Eat Their Prey Alive Praying mantises are one of the most magnificent predators of the insect world. Their strong forelimbs allow them to kung fu their opponent into submission and eat it alive. This cruel sight of a praying mantis eating this insect alive is sure to send chills down your spine. The mantis starts with the head and slowly and steadily devours the victim alive. Their punches are so strong that they can break through shells of other insects. So, how exactly do praying mantises manage to pull off these horrific hunts and what makes them truly unique? First things first, let's talk about its fascinating name. Why exactly is it called a praying mantis? The European mantis, Mantis religiosa, is a perfect example of a praying mantis. Look closer and you will see two spiked, grasping forelegs which are also known as raptorial legs. When waiting for a prey, a mantis usually assumes a prayer-like position by remaining stationary in an upright position with the forearms folded. This position is so iconic and that's why the name mantis comes from the Greek word prophet. Don't be fooled though, because mantis are no Buddhist monks. Mantises are one of the best ambush predators out there and have one of the cruelest ways of killing its prey. Many species of praying mantises, like the beautiful orchid mantis, have taken advantage of evolution by developing an almost perfect camouflage near the orchid flowers it resides. Mantises don't like to move much and wait for their prey to come down within striking distance. Once a fellow insect closes in, the praying mantis strikes with lightning speed and extends its raptorial legs to catch the prey. The raptorial legs are spiked all the way around which helps the mantis to hold the prey tightly and securely while it begins its feeding frenzy. Praying mantises have very sharp mandibles, which allows them to eat their prey alive. Unlike some other predators who will wait until their prey is dead, mantises value their time too much and start feeding on the prey as soon as possible. Slowly and steady, it uses its chainsaw-like teeth to nibble away at the head of the hapless prey. This is one of the most brutal ways of killing a prey. Praying mantises love to feed on a wide range of victims. If it can be grabbed by the raptorial legs, then it is a sure shot meal. Bigger mantises can even eat lizards, turtles, and small snakes, which can be three times the size of the mantis itself. Take a look at this video for an example. An orchid mantis imitated the color and the texture of the flower it's sitting on and patiently waits for the prey. Now this approach is truly genius because not only the camouflage helps it to hide itself, but also attracts the insects as they mistake the orchid mantis for a flower and foolishly approach it. The mantis stays still like a ninja and patiently waits for the prey to move closer. Praying mantises are the only insects that are capable of turning their heads a full 180 degrees. They have a flexible joint between their heads and body which allows them to swivel its head so they can easily detect a prey without moving much of its body. All of these abilities make it a deadly predator. The camouflage abilities of Orchid Mantis is so successful in doing the job that it attracts more insects than the real orchids themselves. Ambitious as it may be when it comes to hunting, there is another insect which is the sworn enemy of praying mantises and it's none other than a bigger praying mantis. Yes, you heard it right. Praying mantises are cannibalistic in nature. The biggest threat that a young mantis faces is its life in the form of another adult mantis. Only about 2% of praying mantises manage to survive for more than a few weeks after hatching. There is even a tendency among the hatchlings to fight among each other. Once the hatchlings go their own way, their survival is a matter of chance. Predators lurk everywhere in search of much needed protein. Take a look at this video to understand this better. A black and red mantis is being chased by a jumping spider. The mantis uses every trick in its book to escape from the predator. Making use of its forelegs, it climbs from one plant to the other, but very soon, the spider catches up. Now that running away has failed, the praying mantis has no other option than to fight and fight it will. It strikes a stunning pose which resembles a kung fu master from a Hollywood movie. The pose may be spectacular, but inside the mantis is trembling with fear. This so-called kung fu pose is a farce which mantises use to make themselves look bigger in front of their enemy and fool it into running away. This time, the luck is on the mantis side 
as the jumping spider runs away, fearing a scuffle. The picture is not over, though, as very soon the young mantis runs into a much bigger orchid mantis. Before anything can be said and done by anyone, the orchid mantis dismembers the head of young mantis in an instant. Maybe he was not lucky after all. And this is not the only form of cannibalism that takes place in the mantis world. Sexual cannibalism also takes place in mantises, where the much larger female eats the male mantis during the process. Once ready to mate, a female mantis sends out a very strong pheromone, which seduces male mantises to such an extent that they stop caring for their own life. Though at times the process of mounting takes place without much fuss, many times though there is a wrestling match before the mating process where the female tries its best to decapitate the male, for he is finger licking good like a bucket of KFC. Some estimates suggest that the chance of a male surviving such an encounter is less than half and most of the time, the female manages to overpower the much smaller male and decapitate him. Though it may seem like a kiss to a third person, in reality, the female is eating the head off of her soulmate. But what comes next is truly mind-boggling. A decapitated head does not mean that the male loses the will to mate. There have been instances where a decapitated male continues with the process of reproduction even after six hours of losing its head. What's even more incredible is the fact that the movement of the male gets even more vigorous after the head has become a snack for his partner. Now, mantises are not the only insect that performs sexual cannibalism, but the brutality with which it happens is unheard of. Some scientists believe that sexual cannibalism is actually good from the evolutionary standpoint. The mother gets the much needed proteins and calories and produces much healthier and stronger babies as a result. However good it may be, you wouldn't want to be standing in the shoes of a male mantis. Fun fact, they may all seem ferocious and scary, but praying mantises are a sought after pet in many countries. They are non-venomous to humans, and because of the gigantic size difference, they never consider humans as something they want to eat. Chinese mantises are very famous among exotic pet owners, as they are considered as one of the prettiest insects. I mean, if you could use the word pretty for an insect. They get accustomed to their owners fairly soon and are easy to care for. Some people even use mantises to kill harmful insects in their gardens, but this approach can also backfire at times, because mantises don't differentiate between good and bad insects. Food is only food to them. In the process, they may even end up eating native bees that are pollinating your plants. In the end, these brutal killers may do as much harm as good in the end for your garden. Apart from Antarctica, praying mantises exist on every other continent in the world. Officially, there are around 2,400 species of mantises in the world, but many wildlife experts believe that there are many more species that remain undiscovered. Evolution was particularly kind to these little monsters.